Hello and welcome to the fifth of our SCCA F5 lecture recaps. This one was on back flush accounting. You need to realise on back flush accounting you don't need to know any calculations, you just need to know the concept. So what is back flush accounting? Well, it's where we flush out the costs at the end of our manufacturing process. So there's no accounting entries during the process. We go back at the end and allocate the costs to the finished product. And that's in essence what back flush accounting is. It means that there's no complex work in progress entries throughout your manufacturing process. So you're not debiting and crediting out of each section of the process. You just wait till the end and go back and allocate your costs to the finished product. So how do you do that? Well, traditionally, you would sequentially track the goods through the process. Okay, you'd have a debit and a credit at each stage, moving your work in progress through the process. But back flush accounting says, right, we've got a just-in-time environment. We know from our last session that a just-in-time environment means that you don't get build-ups of inventory. So there's minimal inventory throughout the system. So there's no need to try and value it. It doesn't change. It stays the same and it's minimal. Therefore, the, the fact that there's no inventory at the start or during the process means that we have no need to track it through. So there's no need to track through with those debits and credits. We just go back at the end and allocate our costs. So any advantages to back flush accounting? Well, it reduces the time and costs. Because you're not having to sequentially track those goods through, it reduces the time spent on the accounting entries. And therefore also you'll have less records. Don't need to record everything through the process. It's much simpler. No work in progress calculations. So it's going to be simpler. Inventory has no value until it's sold. Okay, so you don't really have a value attached to inventory until it's actually sold and then you go back and allocate it to the final product. Any disadvantages? Well, it must be a set predictable process. So for back flush accounting to work, you can't have fluctuations in the level of inventory because if there are, you need to go back and value that inventory at different stages. So it must be a set predictable process. There must be stable prices and usage. So both of these would lead to inventory valuations changing. And if they change, then you need to go back and debit and credit and find out where the different valuations are. Back flush won't be suitable in those situations. So if the price is changing, it means that some of the inventory in your system will be at a different price than others. So you need to track that to find out the true cost at the end. Also, if there's different usage, different usage levels and fluctuations, will mean again that you need to track the um, work in progress through the process. You can't just rely on back flush accounting. Production must equal sales, i.e. no build up of inventory. If production was more than sales, there'd be extra inventory and you'd need to value it. So you'd need to do the traditional method, debit and credit, value your work in progress. You can't use it for external reporting except in very exceptional circumstances because obviously you need to um, value your inventory at the lower of cost and net realizable value and Backflush doesn't really do that. And you must maintain cost control. Again, if costs are fluctuating, Backflush isn't gonna be applicable. So you must maintain cost control. Okay, so that was our session on Backflush accounting.